I'm going to be joined in a moment by Raj Chengappa, Editorial Director of Publishing in India today. I'm also joined by Yogendra Yadav, President Swaraj India. He joins me and Swapan Das Gupta, former Rajya Sabha MP and BJP member joins me. Swapan Das Gupta, let's come to you first because what do you see as the Modi model? What are the hits and what are the misses? If I were to ask you, tell me the three big hits and the three big misses in your view. No, Rajdeep, I, I won't approach it in that way. I think if you're going to look at what might be called the Modi model, I think the most important thing is it's a vision of India to think of India as something which is much greater in terms of aspiration, in terms mm -hmm. of performance than it, what, it has, what it has hitherto been. It is trying to get the full potential of India as far as possible and using the government as a facilitator for that. That's the essence, the broad ambition of what you, you call the Modi model. I'm not going to use the word Modi model. I think that's the Modi vision. And I think if you look at various things, various, whether you look at the architecture of the welfare projects, where you look at foreign policy, whether you look at other ec economic initiatives, you will find that all of these are tailored, A, for the long term, B, to make it transparent, and C, to ensure that it reaches every section of society. Today, when the Prime Minister talks about in ensuring that all the benefits of the programs reach 100%, it's an assumption, and I think quite rightly so, that it, there are still sections of the population which are uncovered, which are not completely covered by this. So at every point, the idea is that you penetrate more and more and ensure that nobody gets left out and mm -hmm. that the standards of living of Indian people are brought up in gradually in every possible way and that everybody gets that necessary elbow room, whether it's through toilets, whether it's through drinking tap, uh, tap water and other housing, so that you get that elbow room, so that your full potential of an individual or of families can be okay. fully developed. That's what I think is the, what the Modi aspiration is, what's what I think the Modi vision is. Yogendra Yadav, you want to respond to what you just heard from uh, Swapan Das Gupta that the model is aimed, if I may use the word model, at raising the standard of living for all and thereby, according to uh, Swapan Das Gupta, the welfare schemes in particular would be seen as a representation of this Modi model. Uh, Rajdeep, to my mind, that's not the model. That's actually the label or the wrapping on the model. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Modi must be credited with one thing. For the first time probably in the country ever since uh, independence, and go uh, independence, governance, development, economic policy, everything has been absolutely fully aligned with politics, with the aim of electoral victory. So it's a political model. What is the model? Uh, I don't think it's a model where there is absolutely nothing being done. Uh, this is a model where the government very carefully identifies a few things, a few deliverables uh, that is connected to the electoral constituency. Those few things the government does put effort to deliver. They could be tiny, they could be tinier than the previous regimes, but that doesn't matter. You focus on a few things, you put all your energies to deliver them, you put even more energies in communicating it, and you put even greater effort than in politically consolidating it. So there are three elements to it. One, some targeted welfare schemes. Two, enormous publicity, communication, media control. Three, divisive politics to ensure that it trumps and that it elides all other things that may be happening. Deaths that are happening, miseries that are taking place, uh, people who are sinking, unemployment, now inflation, all other things can be pushed to the dark. And above all, what can be pushed to the dark is some people doing enormously well. Today, Mr. Modi spoke about Garib Kalyan. I thought there are two people whose Garib Kalyan has been done enormously well in the last uh, two years or so. When COVID began, at the beginning of the pandemic, Mr. Ambani's total wealth was 2.6 lakh crore. Today it stands at 7.6 lakh crore, just in about two years' time. 
Mr. Adani was not even 1 lakh crore rupees when it began. He was about 60,000 crore rupees. Today, believe it or not, he's 8.2 lakh crore rupees, 14-fold increase. Now, that is what we don't want to talk about, but that is essentially a part of the Modi model. It's a political economy model. Okay. It is not merely a governance model. Interestingly, uh, to get two fascinating perspectives to this, uh, is there a middle ground? Raj Chengappa, you've just brought out the latest India today, the challenges ahead, three years of Modi 2.0. In a sense, is this therefore a model or a government still in the making where the record is mixed and it depends on what you cherry pick uh, to decide on whether it's been effective or not? Well, I mean, to, to, I agree with Chopin on some fronts and Yogendra on the other. Welfareism has certainly been his hallmark and we've seen that right through both the first term and the second term. We could also try to talk of rising inequalities and we could try uh, talk of yes, welfareism. I mean, certainly. Uh, if you look at security and national security, he certainly has been bold in a, a lot of things. So I would char characterize the government as being efficient, if mm -hmm. you see DVT, and also, you know, eliminating corruption and things. Right? There's been a great deal of efficiency in terms of delivery on a lot of the schemes that's there. And uh, overall, you get a sense that he thinks big, he's bold, he's decisive in what he takes. So there is a model that is emerging. It's still work in progress because he's in his eighth year that's there. And let's not also, uh, you know, let's not forget that in this second term, it has been, any Prime Minister would have found it very difficult to manage the challenges that came. And they came in one after another, whether it was COVID, lives and livelihood involved, and therefore the economy had to be dealt with. Then if you take a look at the external threats, China, as well as Russia, and the Ukraine war, each brought its own set of uh, problems that, that was there. And I think it took all of Mr. Modi's experience to deal with each of them. He, f he made his mistakes. His government made the mistakes. You could see initially COVID, you had the lockdown and the second wave, both very, uh, lockdown too stringent, it hurt the economy more. And uh, the second wave, we saw the lack of oxygen. But he learned from those mistakes and uh, very quickly recovered the way the vaccine research progressed, the fact that today we have almost 1.9 billion uh, you know, individuals uh, uh, vaccinated. That's tremendous credit, which even President Biden talked about. Then you take a look at China and Russia. Uh, take a look at the way he uh, handled, uh, put national interests right on top, was firm with China. Everybody could have, could have criticized him. Yes, there was an ingression that happened. But the fact that he dealt with it firmly, and even in Russia, a delicate balancing act. You know, in, in many senses, he's maintained the neutrality, kept India's national interests in mind. So overall, if you see, there are... There are issues that we, he now faces. Inflation is certainly uh, a serious problem. Unemployment and jobs. Economy, I believe, is one of the areas he has to focus on. To his credit, he's also been radical in his second term. If you look at the thrust towards privatization that he's taken, whether it is the farm laws which failed mm -hmm. for other reasons, but it was certainly uh, uh, you know, a move in the right direction. Take a look at uh, PSUs, public sector units, the fact that LIC, IPO uh, has mm -hmm. happened as well as Air India that's there. So if you see that, and the fact that departments, holy cows like the space and atomic energy was open for privatization, he, I think, is moving, and quite rightly, from uh, welfareism to wealth in some senses. And that wealth, uh, what Yogendra was saying about the two individuals, that wealth has to be for all.